Assalamu alaikum and hello and welcome to Baby Step Med where I try and make difficult medical concepts a bit easier. Um, please like and subscribe to watch more videos. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. And um, this is a video about the embryology of the esophagus. I try to make this like as easy as I could. So just let's so at about four weeks the lung bud appears at the ventral wall of the foregut and the tracheoesophageal septum divides this into two parts it divides it into a ventral portion and a dorsal portion the ventral portion forms the respiratory primordium and the dorsal portion forms the esophagus which is initially very short and then it lengthens rapidly with the descent of the heart and lungs and the surrounding splanking mesenchyme forms the muscular coat uh, forms the muscular coat of the esophagus and the upper two-thirds are formed by striated muscle which is supplied by the vagus nerves what the heck is that <laughs> anyways um, and the lower portion and the lower one-third is formed by the smooth muscle and which is supplied by the splanchic mesenchyme so I have a little picture here. So as you can see, this is the lung bud and this is the tracheoesophageal septum and this is the esophagus. The yellow part is the esophagus. And um, you can see uh, from a bird's eye view, this is how it starts. So the fuse, um, so the folds start to fuse and then they just break off. But sometimes um, this results in a few anomalies, which I'm going to cover next. So you can have three anomalies related to the development of the esophagus. You can have esophageal atresia or um, tracheoesophageal fistula. You can have esophageal stenosis or the esophagus may fail to lengthen. So let's get uh, into the details of these. So your esophageal atresia Atresia. I am not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but either way, um, the cause is the spontaneous posterior deviation of the tracheoesophageal septum, um, or a mechanical factor that may po that may push the posterior wall forward. And the most common form is this one. Uh, I have a little star on it, um, in which the proximal portion of the esophagus, which is the orange one. Um, ends in a blind sac and the distal portion remains connected to the trachea via a canal. Um, these are the other forms. Um, as you can see, this one is completely, um, the both ends are not connected to each other or the trachea in this. Um, in this, um, both ends are connected to the trachea and in this one part is connected and the other part is just in a blind sac. Um, the atresia may lead to the amniotic fluid. Uh, so um, when we have atresia, the amniotic fluid is unable to pass into the intestinal tracts, so which leads to the accumulation of the amniotic fluid, which leads to polyhydramas. And then you may have um, esophageal stenosis, in which the lumen narrows, the lower third uh, of the lumen narrows, and the cause are and the causes are incomplete recanalization, vascular abnormalities or accidents which leads to compromised blood flow. And then we have um, the third one in which the esophagus fails to lengthen. Uh, in this, the stomach is pulled up into the esophageal hiatus via the diaphragm and this leads to congenital hiatal hernia. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and um, make sure to pray for the people that are in need all the people that are suffering uh, all right thank you bye, bye.